Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at this new Rakdos Vampire deck, which made quite the appearance in this weekend's Pioneer Pro Tour. So we'll be trying it out in Explorer. And one of the new cards enabling this strategy is a Vein Ripper, a six mana six five Vampire Assassin with flying and ward, forcing the opponent to sacrifice a creature. So some of the creatureless strategies may struggle to deal with Vein Ripper. And whenever any creature dies, target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. So so kind of an enhanced Blood Artist-like ability. So how are we going to put Vein Ripper into play? Since casting it for 6 mana is a little bit pricey in a format as fast as Pioneer or Explore. Well, we've got Soren Imperius Bloodlord to put it in play as early as turn 3 in this deck. Using the minus 3 ability, we can put any Vampire from our hand onto the battlefield. So now Vein Ripper gives us a very powerful Vampire to cheat into play. But at 6 mana, it's still realistic to hard cast it, especially thanks to the mana acceleration provided by our Goblin Shaman token from Fable of the Mirror Breaker. The card selection also very useful in assembling Sorin plus Vein Ripper. And then of course a great card once we get Reflection of Kiki Jiki going. Can maybe even copy our Vein Ripper so we can attack with two of them while getting twice the effect. And then, of course, Blood Tithe Harvester, also a vampire to fit into our vampire deck. That combines very well with the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And then we've got some of the traditional Heraktos mid-range cards that you might expect to see in other decks as well. Fatal Push and Thoughtseize as very efficient one-mana interaction. And then we're complementing Thoughtseize with a Duress as well with the rise of blue-white control. It's nice to have some more discard effects. And then at 2 mana, recently unbanned in Pioneer and added to Explorer is Smuggler Sculptor. So a very efficient vehicle that lets us draw and discard whenever it attacks. And then we can easily crew it with many of our creatures, including our creature land Mutavolt, which also turns into a vampire, so it has plenty of synergy throughout the deck. And then Dusk Legion Zealots, one of the few vampires that you may not see in your more traditional Arachdos midrange decks, but it's perfect here as a cheap vampire to draw a card, help crew Smuggler's Copter, and we can also sacrifice it to Soren's second ability, where we can sack a vampire to deal three and gain three, and with a Vein Ripper on the battlefield that can deal even more damage. And then we also have a one of Bitter Triumph as a bit more removal that can also deal with Planeswalkers. And then at 3 mana we've covered Fable, Soren, and then Preacher of the Schism, already a card that saw some play in Rakdos midrange as a nice card draw engine. Also happens to be a vampire, so also a perfect fit for this type of strategy. And then the mana base has quite a few goodies, four copies of Mutavolt, as we've discussed. We also have two copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant as another creature land that gives us a bit more graveyard hate as well. And then three copies of Cavern of Souls, naming a vampire, can also make our Vein Ripper uncounterable in those late game matchups against Blue White Control. And then plenty of Black Red Dual Lands. And then the Abandoned Mire can also be channeled to maybe get something back from the graveyard. Maybe we have a Sorin on the battlefield and we just need to randomly mill a Vein Ripper to put it in hand and that uh, might work out as well. Now I've also included the sideboard. Now do keep in mind the sideboard was designed for the Pioneer meta game, so it does have Damping Sphere, which is a card meant to disrupt the Lotus Field decks, which aren't really very popular in the Explorer meta game. So Damping Sphere can probably be replaced with something else, but uh, otherwise most of the cards should translate. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems functional. Some creature removal, and then Zealot into Fable. Don't have any of our combo pieces to cheat a Vein Ripper into play. But uh, our deck can win in other ways as well. Turn 1 Island could be blue white control. Never mind, Merfolk and the Deep Root Elite. I'm happy to Fatal Push, or we can take a turn off and just get a Fable or a Preacher going. Could even Soren put in Preacher with a minus, and then Zealot to protect Soren, or we could even Soren and then sank the Zealot to take out the Elite. And then next turn we can put in Preacher while keeping a removal for other Merfolk. I think I prefer that idea. So we'll hit for one. And then immediately take out the Deep Root Elites. Oh, 
and then next turn we can get on the board for free using Soren's Minus. If our opponent has a Tide Binder, they can attempt to counter the minus 3 ability. Then we would still have better Triumph to take it out while keeping up Fatal Push. Seems worth a shot. Could just be a Merfolk Trickster to tap down Preacher instead. Ah, that works. And then now... Yeah, I want to keep Merfolk Trickster in mind. But I guess with Fable we would have two blockers. Okay. And there's a Trickster. Time down Preacher. And we'll see if they have a way to enhance it. With another Sword in hand, it's not a disaster if it dies here. Now, of course, they could have the Merfolk Lord that can be flashed in, giving Merfolk plus one plus one. So it's not the safest block. So I think we'd rather just let Sorin go and potentially deploy another one if needed. Alright, so I want to hang on to pretty much all my spot removal. So I think Sorin and Fable go. Hope we don't top deck Vein Ripper pretty much. Or we can keep one Sorin and then just get rid of the second Fable. Which I can buy as well. Alright, well, there's Vein Ripper, so we could potentially reap the rewards now. Go to attackers, see if they let us attack. And a collected company response, that's fine. If we went with main phase Sorin, they could have tried to company hit a tide binder to stop the ability. So I think I prefer this outcome. So they're gonna try and counter the preacher's ability now. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Now we can still use the treasure token here to um, enable revolt on fatal push, take out the tide binder. So this will gain Death Touch again. I think that's worth it. They could counter by sacking the Trickster, but then we'll just pay for it using the Hexcatcher's ability here. But they did still counter the Preacher's initial trigger. Now the problem is if I try to cast a Sorin, our opponent can just counter by sacking a Merfolk. So that's unlikely to work out. So instead, probably just pass the turn and uh, take out some of their Merfolk at instant speed. Scout is fine. Should maybe Fatal Push Hexcatcher now before they can sank the scout in response. That one's gonna company again. Finding Kumena and Silvergill. Okay, so they can tap three Merfolk to draw a card now. And draw another one from the Silvergill. Alright, Hex catch her down. And then now probably better triumph Kumena. Paying three life. And then they have to decide now if they want to draw a card and not attack with a Trickster. Opponent lets it go. So that all happens, and then now the coast is clear for Sorin to cheat in Vein Ripper. And attack. Now with Vein Ripper in play, if any creatures die, opponent gets drained for two. And Merfolk are gonna have a tough time beating this. And a reflection of Kiki Jiki is also pretty sweet since Vein Ripper's not legendary. Alright, opponent also have the Deep Root Pilgrimage to make some hexproof Merfolk. But uh, it's probably too little too late. Next turn, copy Vein Ripper. 
can also give it lifelink with Sorin. And that's lethal in the air. Could also trade the reflection for Silver Gill. Keep Sorin alive. I don't think it really matters. Okay. Can also get in there with a Muta Vault. So yeah, it was a good back and forth with a Merfolk deck. They had double collected company, so their draw was pretty decent. But glad we held on to Sorin to try and cheat in Vein Ripper. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing what's probably blue-white control. And uh, yeah, given that we're up against blue-white, Copter, Fable and Sorin are some of our better tools. So I'll keep. Just missing a Vein Ripper. Well, there it is, speak of the devil or the vampire assassin. So turn two. I guess we can maybe bait with a Copter, flush out some counter spells. And then next turn we could try Sorin, or we could try Fable first. Now, of course, resolving a Vein Ripper against Blue-White Control is not the end-all, be-all. Since they'll have uh, plenty of ways to remove it without triggering the ability too much. Okay, um, yeah, let's try Fable. No more lies, the new counter spell. Can double spell Copter plus Harvester, perhaps. And that resolved pretty swiftly. And I'll lock down. Yeah, that's a pretty nice answer to all our trinkets. Just gotta hope uh, Sorin resolves now to put in Vein Ripper. And then we can make our future vampires uncounterable too. That resolves. Put in Vein Ripper. And then I could attack with Mutavolt or I could cast Dusk Legion Zealots. Probably just go for Zealots and then if they have a board wipe so be it. Another Vein Ripper, alright. Just need one more land to cast it. And then now sacking a Zealot to Sorin's ability can deal even more damage with Vein Ripper out. Opponent puts Kahira in hand, and that's acceptable. And casts it. Okay, so yeah, possible uh, if they just want Kahira in place so they can finally target the Vein Ripper. But now we can use Sorin in a multitude of ways including sacking the Zealot to take out Kahira, and then we can still cast Harvester and attack with Mutavolt. Okay, opponents at 8. Can they top deck a sweeper? They cannot, and yeah, Vein Ripper gets it done against Blue Eye Control. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. 
Our hand is just missing Vein Ripper to go with Soren, but we've got a decent start of Fatal Push into Harvester. And now a Duress, probably up against Blue Rat Phoenix. So their hand's gonna be a bunch of cantrips. All right, never mind. Spell Pierce. Sometimes a one or two off. Well, I think we still go for Harvester. Thoughtseize mainly looking to take away like a treasure cruise. So that can still wait a turn. Opponent with an opt end of turn. And this is where they might already be able to bring back Arclight Phoenix. Nope, just a tapped steam vents. So start by attacking. Question is whether I want to Soren and then plus on the Harvester. It's not unreasonable. Or we could have a look with Thoughtseize and then keep a Fatal Push with Revolt through the Blood Token. Which is maybe a little safer. Just see what they're working with. Eh, Fire Impulse takes out Harvester, that's fine. And it is indeed an Arclight deck with another Spell Pierce in hand. Could have countered Soren. And then Galvanic Iteration, which can copy their next spell. Yeah, I think we still take the Iteration just because they can otherwise cast it twice. Maybe copy a cantrip and pull ahead. And this makes it harder for them to copy a treasure cruise if they top deck it. But now we do need to keep Spell Pierce in mind. Opponent can just hard cast Arclight Phoenix. So I'm not opposed to use Blood Token to Fatal Push. Although I'm sure the Phoenix will come back eventually. And then now the coast is clear for Soren to resolve. Probably still better than channeling Abandoned Mire with only Harvester in the graveyard. Although if we mill a Vein Ripper, I guess we can try and set up the combo. But then we also still need to play around Spell Pierce. So this way we at least resolve Soren. Uh, Ledger Shredder, good target for Fatal Push. But wanna untap to be able to pay for Spell Pierce. And there's another Fatal Push. I mean, we could go for the highest upside play, which is channeling Abandoned Mire. And then, of course, uh, milling a Vein Ripper and putting it in play with a minus. Thing that's not super likely, so we'd rather just deal with the Ledger Shredder. And then they're unlikely to get back Arclight Phoenix for free next turn. Alright, I think it's time to abandon Mire. No Vein Ripper. So it's just Zealots or Harvester. Maybe Zealot at this point is better, since we draw a card off of it and we don't mind if uh, we sacrifice it to Sorin. The only drawback is if I want to put it in play now, Sorin falls to 3 loyalty, so that's within range of Arclight Phoenix attacking it down. Although, to be fair, we have 5 lands now, so we can potentially hard cast the Vein Ripper if we draw it. So I think I still like the tempo play of... Uh, Putting Zealot on the battlefield. Welcome to the family. Find another Harvester. Okay. So a very slow game. If her opponent ever top decks a treasure cruise, we're in trouble. Starts with Consider. And yeah, they're clearly waiting on the iteration until they find a treasure cruise. And looks like they'll be able to get back double Phoenix this turn. So Soren down. 
And yeah, we need some help off the top. So Plossing Surin would have left it at 7 loyalty, but then we wouldn't have been able to minus. And there's Vein Ripper. Alright, so we're getting close. So Zealot may as well attack. Playing Harvester to use a blood token might get us to 6 mana. But I don't really want to discard anything to the blood token in a way, since Fatal Push could be a way to clear another Arc Light, but only if we actually use a blood token, which then implies discarding Vein Ripper. So maybe I just have to go for it here and discard Fatal Push. Or we can keep Harvester around plus a blood token to maybe take out Arc Light if we hit our six lands for Vein Ripper, just hoping that it's an untap one. Because then we actually get to trigger the Vein Ripper's ability. Okay, Ledger Shredder also a good target for Fatal Push now. And we can still pay for Spell Pierce. Opponent considers. We may as well let them uh, connive first. And yeah, that Spell Pierce is gone. We take six and hope for an untapped line here. There we go. Cast okay, Vein Ripper. And then now Harvester take out Phoenix will trigger Vein Ripper, which is probably the safest move. And hit you for one. Opponent with another prankster, finding treasure crews, and now with uh, iteration, never mind. Opponent chooses lightning axe, which I guess is a pretty clean answer to Vein Ripper. They will need to sack a creature, but they can just get Arc Light back. Kind of expecting them to just get treasure crews, copy it with iteration, and draw six cards, but uh, lightning axe is probably what they were looking for. Yeah, sadly, five toughness versus six is a pretty big difference here. Opponent's at 9. Now at 7. We did gain some life back. But our opponent's about to unleash the birds. Still have a Mutavolt. But that may not be enough. Thoughtseize looks pretty bad here. Okay. Got our opponent to five. So they'll have to keep some pranksters back on defense. And there's the iteration, so it's time for treasure crews. And draw six. They haven't made a land drop yet, so they'll have two mana available. So we might see them keep our client Phoenix back on defense for a turn. And we're pretty much hoping to top deck another Vein Ripper. Another Lightning Axe discarding Phoenix. So they're just gonna lay on the pressure. They can put us to one. Alright. Yeah, opponent uh, wisely keeping a Phoenix back, because if we top-decked another Sorin, I could have attacked for two and then chucked Mutavolt, being a vampire, at the opponent's face. Fable is not going to do it, so we need to discard it with our Blood Token. But I'm not sure what does it here. Sorin. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's what could have done it had they gone all out. But uh, put and played it safely. 
So I'm going to make I can make it a 3-3 three, three lifelink back up to 7. I guess hope our opponent can cast 3 spells somehow to get Arclight back and then we survive for another turn. But I'll only have 5 lands, so I also don't see how that works out. But our opponent's blocking 100% of the time here. But maybe that's still my best chance is them not blocking. Yeah, I'll just uh, attack for two and see what happens. Our opponent instantly blocks. And then there's nothing left for us to do. Opponent more than capable of getting Arclight back once again. 15 cards remaining. Her only hope is her opponent drawing from an empty library. And there's Arclight to cross the finish line. GG's on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand is okay, not amazing. But we've got a bit of a curve going. Facing a pseudo mirror match, put on just mono black vampires. So a duress taking away Fable would be pretty annoying. Although their opponent still has a knight they can deploy. And then a preacher, Vein Ripper, so if they draw Sorin, we're also in trouble. But uh, yeah, I think Fable's just a bit too important for us to resolve. Now our 2-2 uh, two -two may not have an easy time attacking into the Preacher of the Schism unless we draw some other removal, like Fatal Push would be good enough thanks to the treasure token. Another Thought Seize gives us a second chance at taking Preacher, which is certainly reasonable. And then just not play Zealot this turn, Fable on 3, sure. Better Triumph, I don't care about as much. I could uh, Thought Seize once again, and then play a Dusk Legion Zealot. This is my last chance of taking Ripper, so a Sorin top deck is less painful. Opponent can also start activating Knight of the Abel Legion next turn to deal quite a bit more damage. So it is somewhat important that we get on the board. If I play Fable now, they can better triumph the token, but then maybe a reflection of Geeky Jiki can stick around. So I'll still go for Fable. The only drawback is that they get to use their mana somewhat efficiently, but nope, opponent declines to better triumph. Returns the favor. Yeah, glad we deployed our enchantment. Takes Thoughtseize. And doesn't attack with a knight. They could have bluff attacked first. Now, probably don't need land and one zealots. Okay, can go to attackers, see if they take out the shaman. They don't. So they're maybe keeping... Better Triumph for what I imagine to be our own Vein Ripper, or maybe they thought we were more of a mid-range deck before we discarded Dusk Legion Zealot, and uh, they expect cards like Shieldred. Now we can just play another Fable and hang on to our Better Triumph. Is our opponent still not budging? And yep, yeah, Knight's gonna play defense now. Probably only get rid of Swamp. Zealot could still be good if we combine it with Sorin, so it can take something out. Although that being said, it's not even enough to take out the Knight of the Abel Legion, which can get 5 toughness. But it is still a redraw plus a small creature. You can maybe sack it to the Vein Ripper if needed. All right, so we'll attack all out, and then opponent's gonna block and pump, 
so I should probably just Bitter Triumph before they get a chance to absorb two damage. And then losing three seems fine. Opponent's still two lines away from casting Vein Ripper, so hopefully they don't top deck a uh, Sorin. Field of Ruin or Blackleaf Cliffs is fine. Can't really use the floating mana. And then we'll still play Preacher. And then I imagine we'll see Bitter Triumph either on Reflection or on Preacher. Reflection down. Opponent falls to 9 life. Alright, big top deck. Can they find a Sorin? They cannot. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, sure, we can try this. Some early fatal pushes into some powerful three drops. Put in black, a green, could be an Amalia deck. As we see, Innkeeper, which is still kind of a relevant enabler. So I don't mind using a Fatal Push since we have another. And then Fable vs. Preacher. Maybe prefer Fable. Just get a Reflection of Kiki Jiki, which we can maybe combine with a Blood Tithe Harvester to keep mowing down the opponent's creatures. Opponent's got another Innkeeper. And a Wild Growth Walker. So they're just missing Amalia to combo off. Sorin is missing a Vein Ripper, but let's see if we can draw into it here. And we cannot. So instead can attack that opponent double blocks, but there's a small chance. And then we can still Preacher, keep a Fatal Push. And we'll hang on to Sorin. In case we draw Vein Ripper next turn, although at that point we can maybe hard cast it as well. Okay. Temple Garden untapped. And a specialist can get back and keeper. Fair enough. So our opponent's gonna gain some life back. Three mana left. And no plays. Ooh, Vein Ripper, excellent. So I will use Sorin to put it on the battlefield. So we still have a bit more mana available, which we can use to keep a Fatal Push. Don't think Mutavolt is getting too aggressive here. Preacher could also draw something useful. But uh, yeah, we'll start with Sorin, put in Vein Ripper. Now we get to attack. And then Reflection of Kiki Jiki plus Vein Ripper is also a pretty sweet combo. Now our opponent, of course, doesn't lack creatures to sacrifice to pay for the ward, but the Amalia deck typically doesn't have removal for cards like Vein Ripper. And now we can also cast Fatal Push with Revolt thanks to the many treasure tokens. Putin did have a Court of Calling to get Amalia. So we're gonna have to respond. Otherwise they can essentially blow up the entire world by gaining life and exploring infinitely. 
just trying to think if it's better to take out Wild Growth Walker than it is to take out Amalia. I think Amalia still makes sense. But definitely possible that they can get it back next turn and still combo off. Alright, found another Fatal Push, that's good insurance. Another company, okay. Let's see what happens. No Amalia, that's good news. Bone can gain some life back. And then we'll have to do some math here to see if copying Vein Ripper and taking out Gilded Goose can present lethal. Bone can still sack a food token to gain three. And Boseju, nice answer to the reflection of Kiki Jiki now. Alright, that's too bad. Still get to find a land. And Vein Ripper triggers. So the game goes on, and we still have Fatal Push for Insurance. Could try to protect Sorin by casting the Fatal Push, which I don't hate. Although their opponent will still have Wild Growth Walker plus Innkeeper on the battlefield, so they thought that Kamalia they can still combo off. So the safer play might be to just let Sorin go, since it's not really doing too much for me. And then we'll take out Specialist Trade for Innkeeper. Still get a bunch of Vein Ripper triggers. And then Mutavolt can get busy. Opponent trumps. Alright, with Fatal Push in hand, we should have most angles covered. Opponent's back up to seven. I guess they can gain six. So, might still be a little bit short. Let's take our draw step. So yeah, Fatal Push, Gilded Goose, opponent falls to 5. Gain 6 up to 11. Take 6 down to 5 again. And then we're attacking with 4 creatures. Of which they can block 2 without anything dying. And then 4 more would be going through. So, we're almost there. Yeah, I'll just attack. See what we draw. And then we can play Hive. Opponent left themselves to still potentially combo with Amalia. But we've got the Fatal Push in hand to hopefully prevent that from happening. And then now plenty of creature lands at the ready as well. They must have found something useful. Maybe another Court of Calling. Opponent attacks all out, I'll take it. Now 
Okay. Well, we can uh, attack as is without needing to animate any creature lanes, but may as well. Got the mana for it. And let's exile Amalia. And there's Cord for two. And we're just gonna Fatal Push Amalia herself. Could have also taken out Innkeeper in response, which I guess would have done it. And our opponent explodes. So yeah, they uh, potentially still had a way out here if it weren't for Fatal Push. And we get to rank up as well. Awesome. Alright, so we got to face off against some of the most popular decks in the current Explore meta game, and I've got to say I'm quite impressed by this new Rakdos Vampires deck. We've got a lot of overlap with the Rakdos midrange, we get to play with the same Thoughtseize, Fatal Push, Turn 2 Harvester, Turn 3 Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and then a Preacher, already a card that was adapted by Rakdos midrange, happens to be a Vampire, so now we've got Harvester and Preacher, and then just sprinkle in a couple more Vampires, and then Soren can sometimes give you those easy wins with a Vein Ripper to cheat into play on turn 3. So the deck seems quite solid and uh, of course very adaptable as well. We've got some great sideboard options. So I expect this deck to stick around in the Explorer and Pioneer meta for some time to come. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.